The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is Your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented transcribed as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. The Equitable Life Assurance Society has nearly 8,000 trained representatives from coast to coast, serving over 4 million members. Tonight, an Equitable Society representative has an important message on Social Security. We were all keenly interested to hear the news about Social Security. Benefits have gone up from 50 to 100 percent. Ten million more people have been taken into the security fold. What does this mean to you? Are you just starting out with Social Security, or have you been covered all along? In either case, your future has changed. Now is the time to give it a careful once-over. To help you, the Equitable Society has revised its famous fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. In just 14 minutes, Mr. Keating will explain just how this chart can help you. Tonight's FBI file number 293. Its subject, homicide. Its title, The Prodigal Hoodlum. Those who have gone most deeply into the problem of juvenile delinquency agree on this one point. Among youthful lawbreakers, there is no common denominator. Some are bright boys, some are dullards. Some come from broken homes, some from well-to-do families. Similarly, each young criminal is what he is for many different reasons. No one factor is entirely to blame. That is why there is no single cure-all for the problem of juvenile delinquency or for any individual who is classified as such. Tonight's case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation is an example of this. Our file opens in the hospital ward of a prison located beside a river which runs through a large Midwestern city. FBI Special Agent Taylor enters this ward and walks to the bedside of a patient. Are you Mr. Taylor? That's right, miss. Can't you tell he's a cop? They called to say that you were coming up. Please don't stay any longer than you have to. All right, I won't. Ring if you want me. Thank you. Mr. Baker, you feel strong enough to make a statement? About Willie Stone? That's right. Sure. What do you want to know? Everything. Well, I guess it won't hurt to tell you. Maybe I ought to start at the beginning, huh? first time I ever saw Willie Stone, Nurse. he was on a dock a couple of blocks away from here. And when was that? 1935. I was the head man around this town in those days. <coughs> Ran everything. Nurse. No telling how much dough I had rolling in, but one thing they always said about Harry Baker. I never forgot where I come from. I always used to visit the old Mayport. This day I'm talking about, I went down with Steve. Steve Conway, one of the guys on my payroll. We'd been to the candy store and the pool room and the other joints I used to hang out. Finally, we got to the dock I can use for swimming when we was kids. There was kids there that day, too. Hey, Harry. Get a load of them kids. They don't look like they're worried about much. Oh, I should they be. When I was their age, I never had no trouble sleeping. Dad, where are you going? Swimming. Let's get it up. I'm broke today, Willie. Hey, you don't get wet. Uh-oh, I'm out. I'll pay you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go and don't go with. A dime or no swim. But all the other guys... They pay. Don't get a dime and come back. <laughs> what a touch. Nobody will ever run a benefit for that, kid. <laughs> it don't look like he needs one now, either. 
I can see myself doing the same thing 30 years ago. You charged the other kids for going in? I had another racket, but I was like him. Hey, kid! You talking to me? Yeah, come here. Do you want to see me? You come over here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, what's your name, kid? You cops? No. Nice racket you got. If you want a piece, the answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> How much do you make here, kid? How much you make in your business? That's right, kid. Don't let anybody look at the books. Here, here's a Starbucks. <laughs> Buy yourself a cash register. Oh, thanks. Come on, Steve. <laughs> I'll take the car back myself. Well, uh, what about me? Stick around. Find out about that kid. Get his name and where he lives. I want to see him. And you met Willie Stone before he cut his eye teeth. Yeah. How old was he then? Fourteen. His folks were dead and he lived with his sister. She worked in an office for 25 a week. One day I went down to see him. They lived in a cheap flat on the same block where I grew up. Yes, I'm Betty Stone. I'd like to talk to you about your brother. Is he in trouble? No, but he will be unless he gets straightened out. I know, but I can't do anything with him. I'd like to help you if you'll let me. Who are you? My name is Harry Baker. The Harry Baker? Mm-hmm. Get out. Well, you haven't heard what I want to say. I don't care. You'd probably like to help Willie so he can grow up and work for you. Now, you're wrong, miss. Well, then why should you care about him? I saw him on the 10th Street Pier a couple of weeks ago. A boy looks like I did, thinks like I did. That's why I like him. So you want him to be like you? No. I came here to try to give him the things I never had. This is a chance for the kid. A chance for him to turn out legit, maybe. Look, I don't want to talk... Now, will you sit down and hear what I have to say? Maybe I can talk you into doing it. Well, I did talk him into it. I gave her some dough. And Willie went to school. He never knew it was coming from me. We made up some kind of a story about her or one of the sweepstakes. Message for you, Mr. Taylor. Oh, thank you, nurse. It's from Memorial Hospital, Baker. They say that Willie Stone's condition is still critical. You want to hear the rest of the story? Yeah, yeah, please, go ahead. Well, a lot of time went by before I saw Willie again. About... Four years, I guess it was. I used to send Bo to the sister, and she kept the kid in school. And then, one day, Steve come busting in the morning. Harry. Harry, uh, the kid's outside. Who? Willie Stone. Willie Stone? What's he doing here? I don't know, but he's asking for you. Well, what do you oh, figure? Oh, Baker. I remember me. The kid on the dock, Willie Stone. Yeah. Sure. I'd like to talk to you. Okay, come on in. Uh, wait outside, will you, Steve? Yeah, sure. So long, kid. Well, thanks. Well, you're growing up, ain't you? I guess so. Yeah, that wardrobe looks like you're doing okay. <laughs> thanks to you. What do you mean? Yeah, don't try to cover, Mr. Bake. I know the whole score. You bought me these clothes. You sent me to school. And where did you get that? From a letter you sent to my sister. It had this check in it. Here. How come you to read the letter? I opened it. You think that was right? Well, that's what you're doing. Eh? Now, wait a minute, kid. Look, I didn't come here to complain about that. I don't mind you paying for my education. I just want to pick the subject. Huh? You sent me to the wrong kind of school. You want to go someplace else? Yeah. Here. I don't get it. I want to go to school here in the office. I want to learn the rackets. That's not what I sent you to school for. Look, I want a job with you. Do I get it? No. You're going back to school, and you're going to stay there till you finish. Well, Mr. Taylor, maybe all this sounds like I wanted to be a Santa Claus. Once in a while, even a guy like me gets hit with conscience. Besides, I like the kid. I wanted to give him a break. Might have been better if you'd given him a good example. A visitor for you. Oh, well, 
prostate. How are you, Harry? Not so good. Taylor, this is Steve Conway. Hello, Conway. Hi. Taylor's with the FBI. I'm just filling him in on Willie Stone. Oh? Well, go ahead, Digger. What happened after he came to your office? What happened? Let me see. Oh, um, I, 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 I thought he'd gone back to school. I, I was busy and I didn't have time to check. But a couple of months later, I had a visit. It was Willie's sister. Steve showed him into my office. Well, hello there, Miss Stone. What can I do for you? I came here to compliment you on the job you did on my brother. Well, I... You turned out to be a first-class hoodlum. He's what? I should have known from the beginning that's all you wanted. Wait a minute. What are you talking about? What's this hoodlum business? You should know that. Well, ain't the kid going to school? No. I found out this morning he hasn't been there in months. What? I found out a lot of other things, too. He suddenly has lots of money, a flashy car, and what's more, he carries a gun. Look, Miss Stone, this is all news to me. I don't believe you. Where is Willie? I don't know. Isn't he home? No. He moved out this morning. Where to? I have no idea. You know where he hangs out? In a basement on Market Street. I'll have my boys check on him. And if what you're telling me is true, I'll go see him tonight. Call order. Well, we'll start this end of the table. Let's see it, Mule Frankie. Here's 110 bucks. Every store paid but the Broadway tailor shop. He still refuses to join? Yeah. Says he don't need protection. We'll figure a way to change his mind. All right, Joey, let's have your report. What did you... See what it is, Frankie. Right. Yeah? I'm looking for Willie Stone. We're holding a meeting. Out of the way. Hello, Willie. Well, a great Mr. Baker. What are you doing here? I came to see you. What for? I wanted to talk to you. We're having a meeting right now. I can win. What's with him? Ah, looks like you got yourself a little organization here, Willie. That's right. Seems real familiar. You know, I got my start in a cellar just like this. It was only three blocks from here. This going to be the story of your life? No, it's openness for a little advice. When I started in one of these cellars, there was nobody around to help me. Nobody around to give me a break like I want to give you. Now, look, Let Baker... me talk. I want you to go home, kid. Back to your sister. And I want you to go back to school. Not a chance. Look, you got to finish what you started. I'm starting here. No, you're not. Let's see you start me. Come on, show me how you do it. Got it, kid. Uh, how do you like this, boys? He don't want no action. Maybe this will change his mind. I'm sorry you did that, Willie. Get out of here. All right, kid. I'll go. Turn in just a minute to tonight's exciting case from the official files of your FBI. Now, the Equitable Life Assurance Society will discuss changes in the Social Security law. Over 45 million Americans and their families are affected by these changes. 35 million of these are folks who already have Social Security numbers. Their benefits have been increased 50 to 100 percent. The remaining 10 million are the newcomers to Social Security, now covered by the law for the first time. As soon as the president signed the amended Social Security law, the Equitable Society started to prepare a new and revised edition of its famous fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. This was done in the belief that every intelligent American would want to take a fresh look at his financial picture to see how the changes in Social Security have affected him personally. What you do when you get this fact-finding chart is very simple. You imagine that death has taken you before your time. Your income has stopped, but your kids still have the same appetite for food, the same ability to wear out shoes. How much money will your wife need to cover the monthly expenses she will have to face? 
the fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers will give you a reliable and accurate answer. With their new Social Security benefits, how many additional dollars will they need every week to be well-fed, well-housed, well-clothed until the youngest child finishes high school? In five minutes, the fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers gives you an answer, guides you every step of the way with easy-to-understand pictures. Once you have the facts, you can plan intelligently. Chances are that with your new Social Security benefits, only a small amount of additional life insurance will give your family complete security. Your equitable representative will work out a sound program for you. The first step is to ask him for a copy of the revised fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. No charge, of course. So get in touch with your equitable representative. All right, care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, The Prodigal Hoodlum. Tonight's case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation begins back in 1935. One type of gangsterism was passing from the American scene. Hoodlums moved into new pastures, operated new rackets, sometimes retaining the support of corrupt political machines. In some places, these sinister alliances are operating today. Politics and police should have nothing in common. Aroused, alert citizens have kept them apart in many cities. This separation is your best defense against crime. Fight in every way you can against a police force being politically shackled. It breeds Harry Baker's. Steve Conway's, and Willie Stone's. Tonight's file continues in the prison hospital ward room. Mr. Taylor, I think you'd better let him rest. All right, nurse. I'm okay. These are doctor's orders. They've got to go to the waiting room. Oh. All right. Steve, you tell Taylor the rest of the story. Sure. The waiting room is at the end of the ward. Thank you, nurse. Come on, Conway. Right. How bad off is he, Mr. Taylor? He's on a critical list. Willie Stone still alive? Yeah. Conditions the same as Baker's, though. Here's the waiting room. Go ahead. Thanks. All right, Conway. How about the rest of Baker's story? Well, the night the kid slapped Harry's face, it was like closing a book. Harry never saw him again. Didn't even talk about him. But he couldn't forget Willie, because as time went on, he stepped up into the big leagues. Mm -hmm. He stole the counts from us. If he ran low on whiskey to sell, he hijacked our trucks. Oh, he was in our hair real good. Then one day I went to see Harry. I had to talk. What's on your mind, Steve? Well, I don't exactly know how to say this, Harry. You know, I've been with you a long time. What is this? You walking on? You know me better than that. The boys had a meeting last night. They don't like what Willie Stone's been doing to us. Tell them not to worry about Willie. That sounds big enough. They say no. Then they'd better have another meeting. Harry, they've already made up their minds. They want Willie cool. Huh? They say either you do something about it or they don't want you running things no more. Let them come here and tell me that. Harry, they mean business. Now, look, I'm on your side. You know that. But just between us, the guys have got a legitimate beef. Let me think about it, Steve. I'll let you know tomorrow night. Well, the day after that, Harry went to all his safe deposit boxes, collected his dough, and blew. Where did he go? Europe. He went there meaning to stay. Then the war busted out. The Germans grabbed him and threw him into one of them prison camps. After the war ended, he got sprung, hung around Europe till his dough ran out. Then just about a month ago, he came back. I live in a rooming house on the west side. Some way, Harry dug up my address. Steve Conway, 
That's right. Hello, Steve. Huh? Harry Baker. Harry Baker? Harry. Hi, Steve. Hey, 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 come on in, come on in. Thanks. I, I didn't know you at first. Gee, you've changed. Yeah, I know. I guess maybe I have too, huh? Well, uh, sit down, Harry, sit down. Let, let me dig you out a drink. No, no, I don't want any. Well, when did you get back? About a week ago. You were sure there a long time? Too long, Steve. Well, it, it sure is good to see you, Harry. What about Willie Stone, Steve? What do you mean? Is he here in town? Yeah, he should be. What's he doing? Oh, he's got some kind of a lottery touch. Where's his office? I don't know. He keeps moving. But he hangs out in a Turkish bath at Madison and Broadway. Madison and Broadway. I think I'll go over there and see him. Hey, uh, Doc. Uh, me? Yeah. I'm looking for Willie Stone. Where is he? On the massage table. Where? In that room. Thanks. Well, it's about time you get... What do you want? Hello, Willie. Who are you? Let's see if you remember. Look, Mac, I'm I don't Harry want... Harry Baker. Well... Ah. I didn't know you. You put on a little mileage. Plenty of mileage. Been a long time. Let's see, last time I saw you was right when I quit school. I know. I heard you blew the country. Went to Europe, didn't you? Yeah. When you get back? Last week. Well, what brought you here? I want to talk to you. <laughs> That's kind of a old habit of yours, huh? Well, catch me some other time, will you? I'm waiting for a massage. What are you doing? Locking the door. Now, oh, wait a minute. What are you Stand thinking? Down the table, Willie. I got a gun here. What is this? I told you I wanted to talk. You just lay back and listen. Anybody ever tell you, Willie, what happened just before I went to Europe? Why I went... No. Well, my boys had a meeting. They said they didn't want to go along with me anymore unless I took care of you. I just couldn't do it. That's why I blew. Am I supposed to say thanks? No. All you got to do is listen. You see, I thought I was right in everything I'd ever done with you. Picking you up, sending you to school, and then running away so as not to kill you. Yeah, I thought I was right until it was a war and I wound up in a prison camp in Belgium. I met a guy in the camp, a doctor. He shared the same sound. This doc was a real bright guy. Knew all the answers about what went on in people's heads. Look, what are you telling me all this for? Because it's about us. One day I told him about you and me, the whole works. And that day on the docks till the time you slapped me in that cell I also told him about running away because I couldn't kill you. You know something, Willie? He come up with an answer. An answer to the whole thing. He said the reason I couldn't kill you was because you were me. What? This was something I built up in my own mind, like a like an image he called it. Built it up until I got to thinking we were almost the same person. I couldn't destroy you, he said, because then I'd be destroying myself. Do you get that, kid? Do you see what he meant? No. Well, I did. Then, for the first time, I seen things as they really were. Then I saw what I'd done. I'd walked out on my business, my friends, even the country I'd lived in for nothing. That's why I come home. And that's why, as soon as I got here, I started looking for you. I'm going to make up for all that, Willie. Now, wait a minute. I'm going to make up for everything. Everything I lost by taking this gun and killing you. Harry, killing you right now. Well, the 
rest of the story, you know. Harry Baker pumped five bullets into Willie and used the last one on himself. Yeah, I know. Mr. Taylor. Yes, miss? I have some bad news. Harry Baker is dead. Huh? Well, it happened very quickly. That's too bad. Oh, and I have a message for you, Mr. Taylor. Oh, thank you. What? Nurse, did you record the time that Baker died? Yes. Let's see. It was 8.13. This message is from Memorial Hospital. Willie Stone died, too. At exactly 8.13. As you have seen, tonight's case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation is a story of misdirected good intentions of a juvenile delinquent who, in spite of money and a costly education, became a vicious criminal. Yes, there is no royal road to good citizenship, no easy way to curb juvenile delinquency. It is a known fact that there are two requirements of normal childhood, love and example. Had Harry Baker realized this, had he set Willie a good example, had he made the effort to give him intelligent discipline, understanding guidance instead of mere dollars, this file might have had a different conclusion. As events turned out, however, this ending was inevitable. For as long as our society breeds Harry Bakers and Willie Stones, the Federal Bureau of Investigation will never rest until every one of them is either dead or behind prison bars. In just a moment, you will hear about next week's exciting case from the files of your FBI. But first, another message from our Equitable Society representative on the fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. Equitable men have been mighty pleased with the way folks have been helped by these charts, and they've been going fast. But if you haven't got yours yet, don't worry. If you act quickly, you can still get one without obligation. Just ask your Equitable representative for the fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers revised to fit the new Social Security law. Or send a postcard care of this radio station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. File number 294. Its subject, bank robbery. Its title, Quartet for Crime. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of places or persons, living or dead, is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry D. Lewis. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. Others in the cast were Anthony Barrett, Ted DeCorsia, Barbara Fuller, Isabel Jewell, Wally Mayer, Jeffrey Silver, and Gil Stratton, Jr. This is Your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling transcribed story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Quartet for Crime on This Is Your FBI. Stay tuned for the adventures of Ozzie and Harriet. There's fun for the whole family when Ozzie and Harriet come your way next.